Today we have the 2020 Nissan Murano and if you're looking for a comfy two row cruiser for this price, this is a great option. Today I'm going to give you a full look at everything on the outside, the inside, the cargo space and go for a test drive and tell you all about it and think about is the comfort and safety features of this vehicle enough or are you making some sacrifices? Let's get started. All right, so as we take a look at the exterior, we've got the S trim, SV, SL, and Platinum, and this is the SV, and the Murano was refreshed for 2019, and that carries over for this year. Thank y'all for tuning in. Let's take a quick look at the exterior. So right away, starting up front, we've got Nissan's V Motion Grill. It's their signature grill. It's not quite as large as some of the other grills that they've started introducing. Now with the headlights, all models are gonna get the LED headlights with the LED signature light. It's that V kind of check mark motion there and then that LED blinker looks nice. The fog lights are not available on the base model. They're, they're uh, optional on our SV trim and standard on the upper trims. And at night, these headlights do a nice job. They've got a really distinctive look with that design as well. To me, honestly, this front end is a little bit polarizing, almost a little bit beaver-like with the way that grill looks, but the Murano is 192 inches long, so it sits right in the middle of the three row and two row uh, segment for crossovers. It is kind of large dimensionally, but this color is called Sunset Drift, and I think it looks great on here. This orange is a really pretty color with this Murano. Now, as we move in and take a look at the wheels, unlike some crossovers, you don't have some massive wheel flares, which I appreciate here. So these wheels are 18 inch wheels. The S and the SV that we have will get these 18 inch wheels, 235, 65 series tires. The upper trims will give you 20 inch wheels and the Platinum gets distinctive style 20 inch wheels. A couple differences with trim levels will be with the mirrors. These LED signals on the side are gonna be standard, but the SV, which we have, adds a heated mirror, which can be great for winter time. And then the SL and Platinum actually give you a reverse tilting function, which is always nice as well. On the side body, one nice touch is that chrome door handles are standard no matter what trim level you get. You've even got the chrome trim at the bottom, chrome trim around the windows. And then up above, you've got dark roof rails, and then the upper trims give you chrome roof rails. The only trim that doesn't get roof rails is the base model. One unique factor with Nissan's design is their floating roof. You kind of have a gap between the side body and the roof. A little bit unique and interesting. And then you got LED tail light standard. They have this really cool mirroring design of those daytime running lights up front. Very distinctive at night. Again, definitely stand out with this paint color too. And then you've got a dual exhaust outlet down below. All right, as we take a look at the cargo area, right up under here we have a touch pad to help us lift it. It is not a power gate on the SV. The upper top two trims get a hands-free lift gate though. But back here, there's not quite as much space as I was expecting, but there's a lot of practical features to it. So behind the second row, you get about 32 cubic feet. And a couple things about it is that you have eight different tie down locations throughout this area, all throughout the entire area. There's a cargo light over here. We have a hook like that on each side that you could hook a net on or grocery bags or whatever. Little things like that make a difference. The right side gives you a 12 volt power outlet. If you pull this side up, you've got a little storage bin, could be good for jumper cables. And then underneath the whole thing, you do get a spare tire, which is nice. It does take up a lot of space back here, so it gives you kind of a high load floor, which takes away some of the cargo space. But one perk is that each side gets a lever that you can pull to fold the seats down. So that is really nice, and they fold super flat. This still is not that spacious, and it depends on how much room you have with the, the moonroof or not, but it lays down really flat, which is always nice. Even though this is bigger than the Nissan Rogue and other two row vehicles, it does not have as much cargo space. But as you can see behind the second row, when I have the seats folded, I can fit a stroller and some bags and plenty of space, pretty usable for most people. One thing that Nissan gives you for 2020 on this Murano is a lot of safety features. So standard on every trim, you're gonna get the forward collision warning with automatic emergency braking and a driver alertness monitor to let you know if you need to take a break. Standard on everything but the base and optional on the base is the intelligent distance pacing cruise control, pedestrian detection for your automatic braking, automatic high beams, a lane keeping system, blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, rear parking sensors, and rear automatic braking. A couple other features, standard on the SL and the top end Platinum, but optional on our SV trim with this premium package will be 
front parking sensors in addition to those ones in the back and the intelligent around view monitor that I'll show you on the inside. So Nissan definitely gives you a plethora of driver assist and safety features. As you hop into the front seats of the Murano, one of the benefits to these two row crossovers or vehicles this size is it's really easy to get in and out if you have mobility issues. Now the base S model is gonna give you six way manual cloth seats. The SV gives you 10 way power adjustable seats with two way lumbar support, but we have the premium package so our seats are heated with leatherette on them. These seats overall are very comfortable. They've got really good support good plushness all throughout the seat. They're not heavily bolstered and uncomfortable. They're just perfect for this vehicle. The SL trim is gonna give you standard heated leather seats with the same power adjustments. Those are also gonna have memory settings. And then the top platinum trim is gonna give you semi-aniline leather that are heated and ventilated with the memory settings. That platinum trim is also gonna give you a power adjustable steering wheel for the entry exit system to where your, your steering wheel can move automatically when you turn the vehicle off or on. The steering wheel will be leather wrapped on everything except the base model. And the top two trims, the SL and Platinum, will give you a heated steering wheel. But even just this leather wrapped steering wheel that's not heated, it has a good adjustable range of motion. And I'll show you more in a second. The one downfall is that the passenger seat, no matter what trim level you get, is only four-way adjustable, whether it be manual or power, no adjustable lumbar support, no height adjustment. The rest of the interior of the Nissan Murano is comfortable and plush, especially in the top platinum trim, but if you've seen other modern SUVs, this one is going to look and feel dated overall, but it is still functional and easy to live with. So to start things off, Nissan still gives you their same slim key fob. It is the smart key system that is standard on every trim. Remote start is on every trim except the base model, and you get push button start, you got a nice sounding V6. So to give you a quick run through of the rest of the interior, this whole door panel, the upper portion is soft right here by your arm and the armrest is soft. You can even see that stitching with our leatherette. Good grab handle, only the front windows are automatic one touch. And then you've got enough space for a bottle holder, mine does fit, and a little storage cubby. To quickly access your driver assist features, just press that. And overall the steering wheel is actually, it feels kind of large, but it's not as thick as some steering wheels. The buttons on here, feel and look outdated in terms of their controls, but they are all usable and easy to learn. This is the standard setup for the Murano. You got a couple physical gauges and the digital display in the middle. Now using your steering wheel, you have a few pages that you can scroll through from your home screen, your audio, uh, trip computer type of stuff. Your driver assistance features can be visible on there, tire pressure, and you can customize your settings. Now as we move over to the center stack, this is where things start to look a little bit dated in my opinion. Part of that though, I appreciate that Nissan actually gives you physical buttons on the left and the right. I always appreciate real buttons. It's nice if they kind of incorporate them. Uh, and nowadays you're seeing a lot of tablet style screens that sit up here. Do you prefer those or do you prefer something integrated like this? Nissan even gives you a CD player and this eight inch screen is actually standard with HD radio. You have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, like I said, that CD player and a six speaker system is standard. It's an intuitive screen. It's certainly not the best in terms of graphics or responsiveness, but it works just fine. There's a lot that you can do and customize on here. All right, and now when you put it in reverse or if you just press the camera button up there, you get your intelligent view monitor so you can see next to the vehicle, you can see behind you. It's nice when you're parking or going around different obstacles and this is optional on this trim. Now if you move up to the SL or Platinum, that's where you'll get navigation and a Bose 11 speaker sound system. And then as we come down below, dual zone climate control is standard, so you and your passenger can each get your own controls. Easy control layouts right here. Definitely a lot of kind of shiny black plastic that looks and feels cheap. That's the only thing. 12 volt, not 12 volt, start button right there. 12 volt power outlet over there. And then you got a USB regular and USB type C and auxiliary port. So you're connected with that. And then I like the trim piece right here. This is kind of like a metal trim piece right here. It does look and feel nice. Definitely a good change of pace compared to what's up there. The shifter does feel a little bit old and it's kind of got a wiggle to it. So that's a little bit, a little bit annoying. Very nitpicky, but something to note. I like the stitching and the padding right here. This is actually padded, which is a big plus. And then there's even a little two-tiered storage area down below. It is small, but you and your passenger both get that little section. 
A little further back is where you'll find your heated seat controls for two, two settings, high and low. A little rubberized storage bin right there, good for keys, change, wallet, phone, whatever. And some good sized cup holders. These work well with my bottle, no complaints. An interesting armrest right here. So you kind of have your own dedicated sides, but my elbow tends to want to just fall in the middle. So not my favorite. It is stationary, it does not move forward, but we can lift it up. You've got one tier right there for a little bin. This little bin does not slide forward and backwards, but you have a 12 volt power outlet right there and an illuminated center console. Nissan also gives you a locking, soft opening and softly lined glove box. Right up above, Nissan gives you an automatic dimming mirror with three garage controls here. That's standard on the SV trim and higher, so everything except the base. You get a sunglass holder. We've got LED interior lighting. And then right up above, Nissan gives you the option to get this dual pane moonroof. This is only on the platinum standard, but optional on the SV and the SL. You've got that sunscreen that goes right there. And then this front portion opens up if you want it to. Now we don't have any actual ambient lighting in here, but the SL and platinum model will give you that. And taking a look at visibility, front pillar, looking out the back, not too bad. You've got a little window right there that really doesn't help. And then a pretty small back window. So the styling definitely takes away from some of the visibility. The back seat of the Murano is a comfortable place to be. It's got good room as you'd expect with this size of vehicle and two rows. These seats are also still nice and plush. This material on the door is still nice and soft, which is a bonus. I can sit behind myself at five foot nine, have good knee space, good foot space, and enough headroom even with this panoramic roof. You have a center folding armrest with a little storage bin and cup holders. And right in front of us, you get an extra little storage pocket a couple of illuminated USB ports and air conditioning vents. These seats don't slide forward and backwards because they actually kind of drop down into the floor as you saw with the cargo area, but they do recline a really good amount, which is very comfortable. And then you have a nice view with the roof. And if you want the top two trims, the SL and the Platinum will give you heated outboard seats. Giving this 2020 Murano its legs, you just get one power option, just like last year, and it's a good one. You get the 3.5 liter V6 from Nissan. It's their VQ series engine, a proven engine. It gets 260 horsepower and 240 pound-feet of torque. Certainly not class league numbers, but it's got plenty of pep, especially for a vehicle of this size. It is paired with the continuous variable transmission. You don't get a regular automatic, traditional automatic transmission, you get the CVT, and I'll talk about how that drives in the test drive. The Murano is available with front wheel drive, which is what we have, or all wheel drive, with a front wheel drive bias, and miles per gallon doesn't change whether you get all wheel drive, which is fantastic, so MPG for either one is 20 in the city, 28 on the highway, and 23 combined. All right, y'all, let's get rolling on the test drive with this Nissan Murano. So in this test drive, I wanna give you my first impressions and some of the comfort, uh, the way that this handles, how quiet it is, and just what it's like to drive on a regular basis. So the first thing that stands out to me is that this is very comfortable. I really love these seats from Nissan. Even though we don't have the highest trim with the, the leather, plush seats we have leather at and they're very comfortable. I mean, the overall interior is just comfortable to spend time in. Another thing that stands out is the way that the V6 sounds, the powertrain, and we'll kind of get on it a little bit. Um, I'll talk about the uh, noise, vibration, harshness, how quiet it is on different road surfaces and just what it's like to live with. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna go ahead and get on it. And it's a responsive powertrain. Um, the V6 is definitely um, not quite as powerful as it could be, but it's a refined V6. I love the V6 that you get from Nissan and Infiniti. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the transmission in a, in a second, but the one little complaint is the weight of the steering wheel. Now, I'm not really a huge fan of a heavy steering wheel in this type of vehicle, but lightweight is good it's a pretty lightweight steering wheel to move around which can be beneficial you know for most scenarios with a crossover like this uh, but it's a little disconnected it just feels a little dull I guess you could say when you're driving 
which is a minimal complaint, you know, a very small thing in this type of a vehicle, but just thought I'd mention that. It's definitely not engaging and it's kind of bland and dull to drive. Uh, with that being said, most people won't care about it and it is perfectly fine. It matches the class. Coming to a stop, the brakes on the Murano do a nice job. They have a good feel to them. They're not hard to modulate. You know exactly how much pressure you need to put down. And as we go over here, we're gonna go around a couple of turns. I'm gonna go ahead and get on it. So let's go pedal down and see how it drives. All right, so the transmission definitely held the RPMs up there. It's a, it's got good pickup. It's a peppy little SUV. It's actually not little, but it's a peppy SUV. I like the fact that you get a naturally aspirated engine and not a turbo. And as we go around this corner right here, the Murano is definitely built for comfort instead of handling, obviously, as a family type of vehicle. And it does a great job at comfort. It is definitely good enough at handling and compared to some older crossovers that were terrible at handling, you'll be very pleasantly surprised and pleased when you hop into the Murano. Now, you might be able to hear a little bit of wind noise. It's a windy day, but the Murano is very quiet. And like I said, the only thing I would change is maybe give you a little bit more responsive steering, but otherwise driving this is pleasant. The transmission, I'm gonna go ahead and get on it in a little bit again. The CVT transmission in here is not a stepped gear transmission where it actually starts to change gears a little bit of pedal down. The one downside to that is that it can be really drony and it holding the revs on the RPMs on the engine. Like if you accelerate to get around somebody or whatever, merging onto a highway, it's just kind of annoying. Um, but with that being said, the CVT for the most part in daily driving is unnoticeable, which is pretty much the way that you want transmissions to be. Now we're gonna get on a rougher textured road, a loud surface road. I do road noise tests on the interstate, on a concrete interstate at 70 miles an hour, as well as a rougher surfaced county road like this at 55 miles an hour. And on both tests, the Murano did very good. The numbers were low. You might be able to hear some noise right now, but overall actual noise in here is good. Both ratings were below 70 decibels. You can easily hold a conversation with somebody. Wind noise is well contained because we have laminated glass over here, which is fantastic. And daily driving the Murano overall, it's, I'm not a huge fan of this center console, but I kind of like the, the two tiered aspect of it. Um, but I think the biggest takeaway from the interior is that it just looks and feels dated in my opinion. Now, of course, this is not the top trim, not the plushest, most luxurious trim, but the seats are comfortable, the ride is comfortable, you've got decent pickup, good braking feel, and it's exactly what you'd expect. It's just right on par average for the class in most regards in terms of how it drives. But let's go ahead and wrap things up. So to wrap things up, on this 2020 Nissan Murano, it is definitely comfortable. It's very comfortable to sit in. Those seats are nice and plush and supportive, probably more so than I've seen in any vehicle at this price point. With that being said, it doesn't have as much cargo space as other two row vehicles. In fact, not as much as vehicles that are quite a bit smaller than it. It still has good passenger space. It's got good power. It's got good safety features, but there's nothing that's really a wow factor except for the comfort with this Nissan. Truthfully, if you don't need the power or some of the extra plushness and quietness, you might just want to go for the Nissan Rogue, especially the redesigned 2021 Nissan Rogue, because it's going to offer everything that you want, but be a little bit cheaper too. But leave your comments down below. Is the comfort and the unique style and characteristics of this Murano enough for you? Let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for weekly reviews and have a great day.